I love patriotic music. I do, ever since I was a Cub Scout and a Boy Scout and on and on, I just have a place for patriotic music in my heart. Happy Fourth of July weekend to you. Um, you know, this is uh, uh, kind of an interesting thing, metaphysically, spiritually, for us as students of the science of mind, because I believe the United States of America has an extraordinary spiritual destiny. And part of what I think that is, is that the people who founded our country um, and work to bring forward this extraordinary, extraordinary idea, which I realize is still a work in progress, uh, the idea of democracy, it could only happen someplace in the world that had, that had never been ruled by a king or a queen. You know, that this whole idea of governance by the people and for the people, this was such an extraordinarily high-minded thing that had not really come forward into great expression on the earth. And now, you know, here we are, uh, our wonderful United States of America, and many people from all around the world look to us because of this idea of democracy and a government by and for the people, where people have a level of freedom here that in many other parts of the world is not known. And so I think how grateful I am on this July 4th weekend to look at all the ways uh, that I experience freedom that uh, are not necessarily a given as you look in other parts of the world. Um, with regards to our teaching, you know, we teach that God is the only activity that there is, that God is everywhere equally present, everywhere equally present. And so, you know, I, we've often heard this idea, uh, this notion of God's chosen people. Well, to me, what that says is that the chosen are those who have chosen God, you know, to be... Uh, what would I want to say? To be instruments. They have chosen to be instruments to be used by God for the activity of life, you know, to move through us. This is what we're after. You know, we're, we're always taking our consciousness, this, this consciousness that we hopefully work on every day, we're always taking it with us, right? We're always taking our concept of God, our concept of spirit with us. Um, but whatever, you know, we bind on earth, we bind in heaven. In other words, uh, whatever you let go of on earth, you let go of in the higher realms of consciousness. Now, I think that God loves us. And I think if we could understand this, this would make a huge difference in our life and experience. I believe that God loves us as if each and every one of us were the only thing in existence. That's how much we are loved. Now, people have often thought, well, God loves me if I behave a certain way or if I do this or I do that. God does not love you because of anything that you do. God loves you so much that you are. That's why you exist, because you are already loved by God, which I think is a wonderful thing for us to drink in, to really take that in and say, wow, the whole reason I'm here, the whole reason I exist is because God, the infinite mind, already loves me so much that I got to manifest in this extraordinary expression. So, you know, in Science of Mind, it's, uh, this is uh, such a wonderful teaching, and I love it because it has totally, totally changed my life. I am having a completely different experience of life than I would have had if I had not found the Science of Mind um, 35, 30 some years ago. Mm -hmm. um, now, we often, often talk about having a demonstration, whether that's a physical healing or something in the outer plane. Um, now, demonstrations, I think, are important, but what is more important than the actual demonstration, though, is the conscious awareness behind it. I think for us, as much as we want things, particular things, to show up in our life or our experience, the most important thing is simply to think about the qualities of spirit, the attributes of God. And are we being a place where those qualities, where those attributes are present, where they're in expression? Uh, if there's an area in our life where we would like to have expansion, and I suspect for all of us there is, an area where we would like to have expansion, we say, okay, this is an area I want to expand. And, and this is, I feel constricted or constrained, and, and I want, God, I want spirit to reveal more of itself um, 
but not like this is what I want or this is what I want to have. It's this is a way I believe I could expand. So spirit, so the infinite could be more of itself by means of me, by means of each and every one of us. See, God has given us the freedom, so here's that word, freedom, to contemplate ourselves as whatever we wish to be. So it's kind of an extraordinary thing because if what you do is you contemplate yourself and you say, well, I'm not much, the universe says, okay, interesting choice, you're not much. But if you contemplate yourself to be the place where God expresses like no other, the universe says, yes, you are a place where God expresses like no place else on the face of the earth. And how wonderful that is. So really, I think when I think in terms of our wonderful teaching, the science of mind, what we are really after is to have an ongoing practicing of the presence of God. In other words, we want to have a God realization. We want to have the experience of God. I don't want to just read about God. I don't want to just think about God. I don't want to even just talk about God. I want to have an experience of the activity, the presence, the power, the principle of God within me. And I believe that you do too. Why? Because something happens in us when we have an experience of God, an experience of spirit. I think every person lives their spiritual life a little differently. No two of us are doing it exactly the same. And I think that's fine, we, that we all practice in our own way. And, and we can go as far and as deep into this teaching of science of mind as we want to. But scripture says that where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. I love that. That's one of my favorite, favorite scriptures. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. So what that says to me is that when I'm aware of the presence of God within me, I have a greater experience of freedom in my life. You know, we're always asking people to pray and to meditate, to do spiritual mind treatment. And in doing these things, we want to achieve a greater awareness, what we call in the science of mind, a spiritual realization. Because if we really have a spiritual realization, we are not the same on the other side of that spiritual realization that we for were. We are not the same person. We don't have the same consciousness we had before we did that praying and that meditating. You know, and by spiritual awareness, uh, uh, spiritual realization, I mean an awareness of what we understand to be real and true on the unseen side of life, you know, and that that which is true on the unseen side of life is now in the process of bursting forward into our world of form. See, the healing we see in our mind's eye is, is revealing itself. See, and I think that that's an important piece, that whatever healing we're desirous of, we want to also see it as an accomplished fact in our mind's eye. See, because there is a presence, a transcendental something, that becomes evident. You know, there, there's a level of awakening, I think, that's happening. I think this is happening now. Beyond all appearances, this is what's happening in the world today, that there is a level of awakening. Now, awareness, we say, is curative. Right? So we've got to be aware so we can set about doing what we need to do to have healing. Right? So I believe the experience of God is, is what the Bible talks about as the pearl of great price, having that experience of God. Because, you know, it's easy to pray for world peace. We say, oh, let there be peace on earth. May there be peace for all people. You know, God make this world a peaceful, loving place to which God responds Okay, that's why I put you there. Honestly, I believe that that's how God responds to these things. God isn't going to like reach down this giant divine hand, you know, and slap us around a little bit and say, you need to behave, you know, didn't your mother teach you any better? That is not going to happen. Um, uh, God put us here, uh, God put us here, beings of spirit, be conscious beings on the path, so that we will contribute to making the world a more loving, you know, more peaceful place. Mm -hmm. if, if we seek the kingdom first, all else will be added. I think that is one of the most powerful things in this very teaching, that if we go for God, all the other stuff will take care of itself. But you know, if you don't go for God, if you just are always working toward the other stuff and say, I'm going to get to God later, what you'll find is that the other stuff tends to always be more of a struggle.
right? That we want to be the consciousness first, right? We want to be transparencies for the infinite mind to shine its light and its love through each and every one of us. So I believe that those who are looking to know God have actually been called by God. I don't think that just happens. I think that there is a divine stirring within us. In the Old Testament, you know, I love the story about Lot and his wife, and, um, and they're leaving town because uh, it's uh, exploding all around them, kind of like last night with all the fireworks. I think I, had, I heard more fireworks last night than I have heard in all of my life altogether here in Los Angeles. We had fireworks into the wee hours of the morning. Um, so imagine that's taking place, and Lot and his wife are leaving town. And the one instruction is, whatever you do, don't look back. Whatever you do, do not look back. And of course, somebody had to look back, right? Don't think about the Eiffel Tower, and all you can think about is things that are like the Eiffel Tower. Don't look back, and Lot's wife looked back, and she was turned into a pillar of salt, as the story goes. Now. I think that what she was doing, looking back, is that she was looking into the past, thinking about all she was going to leave behind. She's thinking about all she's going to lose. She's not thinking about what God is offering her and Lot in this present moment, about how good it's going to be in the future. And so because she is so mired in the past, she loses the present experience completely. You know. Um, to me, I think, you know, if we're always, you, you can't drive a car looking exclusively in, in the rear view mirror where you've come from, right? We would all be in an accident constantly, right? Um, and I understand that humanly we love to go down memory lane, you know, and love to think about those happier times. But like we all get it, bread's never going to be a nickel again, okay? So that's just water under the bridge, okay? That wasn't even in many of our lifetimes, you know? Um, but now, right now, not the past, not the water under the bridge. Now is the point of power. Now is where we have to love, where we have to give, where we have to be awake, where we have to be fully present. Now is when we have a moment to forgive. Now is when we have a moment to be grateful. See, because this is the only time that we are living, is in this present moment. You know, so to tell ourselves, I'll be grateful later or I'll forgive later. No, 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 regardless of any temporary condition, you know, the scriptures say, son, daughter, thou art ever with me, and all that I have is thine. So to me, I feel like this is God saying to us, you get to be healthy. You get to have love. You get to have abundance and prosperity. You get to have creative expression in your life. Why? Why is that so? Because you are ever with me, because God is present with us. So the kingdom of God is already right where we are. Isn't that fantastic to know? It's not like we've got to get there. It's right here where we are. The kingdom of God is right here within each and every one of us. It's an inner kingdom within our being. You know, and within us, God is realized. That's, that's really the only place we're ever going to get to know God is within our own mind, within our own soul. And that's where our guidance comes from. You know, all we see in the world out here is made up of ideas from the invisible. You know, form comes out of the formless. So I always say that the one problem we have is a belief that we are separate from God. In any area where we believe we're separate from God, that area is not going to work very well in our life. Because, so belief in separation is what creates the environment for all the discords in life. But come back to this, the kingdom of God is within you. It's the inner kingdom. Heaven is an inner kingdom. Nothing further can be added to you if the kingdom is already within you. And so what we do is what Browning said so beautifully years ago, is that we seek to open a way out for the imprisoned splendor. Isn't that a beautiful thought that within you right now there is imprisoned splendor? And it's your job to let it out. So, all right, so the kingdom of God is within us. And we have to open a way out for it to express. And today I'm going to suggest something um, maybe a little bit different. I'm going to suggest that you pray for whoever, whoever you don't want to pray for. Whoever that is. I don't know who that might be for you. And maybe you're 
you are just pure love and your spirit and you're completely evolved and you pray for everybody. But really, I suspect that there's somebody that the hair goes up on the back of your neck. You know? And so one way to say this is pray for the enemy. Whatever that enemy, I'm going to say today, is the person who takes you out of the loving place of your heart. Anyone that you are not in that loving place for, that's who you need to pray for. Pray for those who persecute you. You know, uh, do I hold myself, or, uh, do I hold anyone in criticism, judgment, or condemnation? You know, where is it hard for you, for me, to forgive? And if you can't do that, then a place to start. Honestly, this is where we start with those difficult ones. Is God, I want to forgive this stinker, but I can't. But I'm willing. So please, God, you forgive them through me. Right? Because divinity, the infinite nature that is within us, you know, can do all things. So I think we are instruments through which God's grace flows. And we, like America, we all have a spiritual destiny. We came here with something important to do. Let's be about the Father's business this week. Let's pray. So we turn our attention inward for a moment now, recognizing that we are surrounded, we are filled with the very light and love, the grace of God is upon us. I know each and every one of us, we are so loved by God that that's why we exist. That's why we're here. And so within this awareness of our connection with God and also remembering that we are all connected with each other on the unseen side of life, I speak this word for each and every one of us that great healing is happening in our life, in our mind, in our bodies, and in the world in which we live. We declare right now that healing is happening, that God is using all of this for a greater good. And I know that the destiny of America is that people live in great, great freedom, expressing their own uniqueness perfectly, lovingly, that we are all celebrated for our uniqueness. I claim this is the truth, the way it exists in the infinite mind of God. And I know as in heaven, so on earth. I claim this is so for each and every one of us. As I claim perfect healing in spirit, mind, emotions, and body. We are open, we are willing, we are receptive. And so we let our prayer be a blessing in the world that we live in. First of all, we think of our family members and our friends, our parents and children, grandchildren, nieces and nephews, everybody that we love and hold dear. We see them in our mind's eye. And we say God's love surrounds them, fills them. They are divinely guided. They are peaceful. They are free. We let our prayer be a blessing in the world so that every man, woman, and child on the face of the earth is touched by our prayer. All living beings are emanations of the one life of love and peace and freedom. We bless our church. We bless all churches, synagogues, temples, mosques, ashrams, all paths to God. And I know we are blessed by being together, that there is raising up, there is healing for each and every one. And for this, I say thank you, God, and I say thank you, God, for so much more. With a full heart, I release this word, and so it is. Together we all say, Amen.